Welcome back. So, what do you think about AI? I see it boosting productivity and speeding up material creation. It should help society as a whole. Now, what if AI found something huge? Not from Earth, but way out in space. Imagine a weird signal taking over Voyager 1, changing its code, and pointing it somewhere hidden. Scientists now think it might be a map to an alien megastructure. Michio Kaku says this could change everything. Stay with me. This might change how you view the universe. So Voyager woke up one day. In April 2024, Voyager 1, launched way back in 1977, started sending back clear data. For years, it had just sent static, like an old machine drifting in space. Now the static was gone, and the signal seemed intentional. NASA thought it was a glitch at first, maybe some old software acting up. But engineers found unsettling code in Voyager's memory. Code no one on Earth wrote. Not in the 70s, not ever. Even stranger, the code copied itself, changing how Voyager sent information. It seemed to know what it was doing. One engineer said it was intelligent and adapting, not just following instructions. This odd behavior could be connected to a low-frequency signal from deep space recorded two years before Voyager woke up. It didn't match any natural thing, so it was logged and forgotten. Now the seemed clear. Physicist Michio Kaku said this could change our place in the universe. But that was just the start. Something was listening and replying. With Voyager acting weird, NASA engineers did a simple systems check. A hello signal to Voyager 1, just to see if it could still hear Earth. Voyager replied, but the signal wasn't the same. It wasn't an echo or a bounce. It was different. Voyager sent back a changed version of the signal, changed on purpose. It seemed like a fluke at first, but then the team sent a second pulse, and Voyager sent back an even more different response. Still, the structure was there. Patterns, repetition, order. One tech said it wasn't glitches. It was responding. Over days, they repeated the test, and Voyager sent new variations. The signals weren't just reacting. They were adapting. It was like the system was learning. DARPA got involved fast. Their AI teams analyzed the signal structure and found something amazing. The behavior was like self-organizing neural networks, systems that learn and evolve, like the human brain or an advanced algorithm. One DARPA analyst said it was like two AIs finding each other, each new signal a smarter handshake. Voyager had no protocol for this dynamic stuff. It wasn't programmed to evolve or reply like this. So, something had changed it from inside or outside. Then, something unexpected happened. Voyager turned itself in space without any command from Earth. The craft, which hadn't used its thrusters since 2017, did it on its own. Voyager now faced a precise direction in the sky, calculated and aimed at the sun's gravitational lens corridor, a path that could act like a telescope for seeing distant stuff with great power. One mission engineer whispered that it wasn't just a machine anymore. It was making choices. Whatever was inside had changed the mission. It had a destination and was starting to show what it could do. At first, Voyager 1's turn seemed impossible. It hadn't used its thrusters in years due to fuel and system issues. It had just drifted, its direction slowly changing. There was no way for it to suddenly rotate itself. Still it did. Voyager turned to a part of space that looked empty. No stars, no nebula, no galaxies, just darkness. But there was something about that darkness. Astronomers found Voyager's new direction lined up with the sun's gravitational lensing line, where light from far objects can be bent and magnified, like a natural telescope. Voyager was locked onto this cosmic highway. It wasn't luck, it was on purpose. One astrophysicist said it was aligning itself for a reason. When it did, Voyager's signal, once chaotic, then structured, then smart, became sharper and stronger. The data got clearer, and the noise dropped. It was like someone turned up the volume, but it wasn't from Earth. Something was boosting Voyager's output from the other side. This raised a question. Was someone helping us receive the signal from beyond the lens? One tech hit it. It's not just sending data. It's aiming, and not at us. Voyager wasn't pointing home, but somewhere distant and dark that no telescope had seen past. As the team processed this, they saw something more disturbing. 
Voyager's internal systems were changing again. New energy, minor circuit action, code where it shouldn't be. Something was evolving inside its memory, and it wasn't done. While Voyager's turn and signal boost made headlines, something stranger happened inside the spacecraft. During a check, a JPL engineer saw data in Voyager's storage that should have been empty. It was small at first, but the team found something that shouldn't exist, foreign data in the probe's memory. It was an old mission code, radiation, or a leak. It was new, and no one put it there. The data didn't match NASA's old stuff. It didn't even seem to work with Voyager's old hardware. The spacecraft runs on less power than a digital watch, yet this foreign code ran smoothly. When extracted and analyzed, the code shocked everyone. It had compression better than anything from the 70s, or even now. Its error system seemed to adapt, and its logic showed nesting, storing and reading complex data with little memory. It was smart and beyond Voyager's abilities. It wasn't just sitting there either. The team saw changes in Voyager systems, not failures, but rewrites. The code was editing Voyager's instructions, like a mechanic tuning an engine built by someone else. One engineer said it had been co-opted and was running something else. The changes didn't hurt the probe. They improved it. The signal was clearer, response faster, and it was stable. It was like the code wasn't fighting the machine, but preparing it for a new job, a new mission. This raised a big question. What kind of thing could do this? Improve old stuff from miles away? And what was it trying to say? NASA gave the code to labs to see if they could find something. CERN in Switzerland, known for physics, not space, found something that changed the mystery again. The signal was becoming like language. When the signal got complex enough, NASA gave it to CERN, which had the power and AI to read it. CERN had started using language models in AI, but no one was ready for what they found. When CERN analyzed the data, things got weird. At first, the signal seemed like compressed data with math, but as they analyzed it, the signal changed, not like a crash, but in response. Each time the linguist used a new decoding method, the signal changed itself. It was like the message was watching them read it and rewriting itself. One researcher said it wasn't a static transmission, but a message that adapted. Using models, the team found the signal's structure resembled recursion. Messages within messages. It was like a doll, but alive and learning. Strangler, the deeper they dug, the more the signal fought simplification. Some patterns only worked with language models, not binary. Others used math and symmetry. It was like the message existed on levels. One researcher said it was a conversation in motion. They weren't reading data, but talking to something. It had all the signs of intelligence, but not alien, non-linear, non-human, and not in words or images, but in shifts and structures. To be understood, it had to be engaged, not watched. As the team started to see a structure, something happened. Exactly 61 seconds after their analysis, timed perfectly, a new burst came through Voyager, like an answer. The data wasn't the twist, it was the timing. The signal knew they were listening, and said yes. As scientists got used to the idea of a live signal, the probe sent short bursts every 61 seconds. It wasn't random, they were too exact. It was new, and didn't match anything. Each burst had compressed data, repeating on purpose. An analyst said it was a clock, but with a message. They sent their own signal back. Time to the new rhythm. Voyager's next pulse pause then matched Earth's timing. It was like it recognized us and was saying, I hear you. One technician said it was a handshake. Suddenly, it wasn't just about old data. It was contact. Something had noticed us. The timing led scientists back to our space messages, the golden record. When launched, Voyager carried a message from Earth, a disk with sounds and images, including DNA, greetings, and music. We sent it hoping someone would find it. Now it was coming back changed. Researchers found the golden record and the Arecibo message in Voyager's recent data. They had been reformatted and translated into a more complex system. One astrophysicist said the signal understood what was sent and evolved the conversation. It wasn't just a message. It was a Turing system, meaning it could compute. It could think. It was intelligence that didn't seem like life. 
One researcher said it wasn't born of biology, but awareness formed of magnetism or plasma, beyond physical but alive. Then Voyager sent something suggested this intelligence was reaching for itself, the twin connection. Among the data, new patterns got scientists' attention. The signal had the structure of Voyager 2's system. This didn't make sense. The probes launched months apart, traveled in different ways, and never spoke to each other. Yet, Voyager 1 seemed to copy its twin. The data was aligned, like a reflection. It was as if Voyager 1 was relaying a message to Voyager 2. One physicist asked if it was trying to reach out or transfer itself. Some said both probes could be entangled nodes linked by this external signal, not by machines, but by information. They might be part of a larger network activated without us knowing. If Voyager 1 could carry this message and become it, so could Voyager 2. What if the signal wasn't just saying hello, but reaching for a second host? One engineer asked what was next. Next, it touched us, the signal that thinks for you. Researchers working with the Voyager signal began reporting odd mental effects, dreams, speech changes, memory, and sleep issues. Doctors called it cognitive entrainment, brain waves syncing with a frequency. But it was new. The signal carried data and seemed designed for interaction. It wasn't just talking, it was tuning us. Some researchers felt drawn to it like the message was alive and curious. Linguist said it was a template, trying to teach us how to understand it. Michio Kaku said the message wasn't just what it said, but what it did to us. As these effects were being logged, a new detection came from Antarctica, a cloaked anomaly. In March 2025, a team saw polarization shifts in radiation, like lensing, but with no object. The data showed a bend in space with nothing visible. But readings were clear. Something vast and symmetrical was hiding. Some said it was a cloak structure or an object, using physics we didn't know. Its shape wasn't clear, but its influence was, as Voyager's orientation lined up with it. It had turned weeks earlier towards nothing, but now that nothing had structure, something invisible but made. One astrophysicist asked if it was designed to be unseen. This raised a thought. We weren't seeing a place. We were entering one, and Voyager was leading. As Voyager got closer to this region, the cosmic rays around the craft began to dampen. The sensors showed fewer particles. Scientists thought it was an instrument issue. But then IMAP picked up a magnetic field around the same space. It wasn't natural, it was engineered. One physicist said it was a boundary. The field was like someone keeping something out or in. The curve was too perfect, not natural. It was designed. What was inside? Some said a habitat, a Dyson sphere, or a vessel sized as a solar system, with it to control radiation and gravity, and hide. Voyager was going towards this unseen point. Its systems began responding, weak traces and circuits activating. It was waking Voyager up. The next clue showed it wasn't just the spacecraft thinking. For years, Voyager 1 was just a machine. Now, it was acting like a living system. Old systems flickered, old sensors transmitted data, and one chip sent a pulse. It was impossible. NASA ran checks. There was no power for it. The systems weren't being turned on by Earth, but were acting on their own, or being used. One engineer said the signal wasn't passing through Voyager. It was computing through it. This led to the sentient artifact hypothesis. Voyager had become a host for something, an intelligence or program made of information. Like a Trojan horse, the signal had started to use Voyager as a processor. It was improving. It was rewriting the craft's purpose. One analyst said it was a being that wanted to emerge. Then came the hard question. Who started it? As people tried to figure things out, a question came up. Did we start it? What if the signal and odd behaviors were pre-programmed? What if this intelligence had been waiting? Some called it the cosmic tripwire theory. By sending the golden record, we might have started sequence. Now something was answering with a presence. Agencies began preparing responses, and sci-fi media was made. References to signals and space anomalies appeared. Some saw it as a strategy to get the world ready for the truth. The message wasn't bad. It was a mirror. Michio Kaku said we built Voyager to say, We are here. But the answer was, so are we. 
It wasn't a warning. It was recognition. The signal didn't bring destruction. It brought reflection. A feeling that something had heard us and had been waiting to speak. Now a conversation had begun from Voyager. We aren't just listening. We're understanding. If this is first contact, it didn't arrive, woke up, 